Good evening and Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. This is the first year I can remember when you might actually forget it is Christmas Eve. It has been that kind of year. Apparently, pandemics and life-threatening viruses don't take the holidays off. And neither does the church. It's true that we aren't physically in the same room tonight, but tonight we are able to still come together as a family in Christ to worship the one born that night in Bethlehem, the one who came to save us, the one who has made God known to us. Tonight we join the angels as they sing and the shepherds as they worship. Tonight we celebrate the light that has come into our darkness. As it is every year, this service will be a candlelight service. At the end of worship, we will light our candles as we sing Silent Night. I hope you have some candles at home so you can join us in this special time. We invite you tonight to sing with us and pray with us and worship with us as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Let's sing, O come all ye faithful.
Tonight, our Advent celebration comes to an end. Tonight, the waiting is over. Tonight, we celebrate that Christ has come. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of the light of the world. We light the candle of hope to remind us of the promises made by all the prophets that God would raise up a Savior for his people. Jesus is our hope and salvation, and he calls us to share that hope with others. We light the candle of peace to remind us that it is only with God and by following his path that true peace can be found. Jesus brings the peace of God to us and calls us to share that peace with others. We light the candle of joy to remind us that God gives joy to every heart that abides in him. As Mary rejoiced in the birth of Jesus, so his birth in us brings us joy and calls us to share that joy with others. We light the candle of love to remind us that Jesus is God's gift of love to us and that in him the light of love triumphs over darkness. God's love never fails. It transforms all those who receive it and give it. God calls us to share his love with others. And tonight, we light the, can the Christ candle to remind us that the light of the world was born this night. God has come to us and been made flesh among us so we might know him. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us so we might behold the glory of God. Truly, we who live in darkness have seen a great light and his name is Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this night holy by the gift of your Son, born of the Holy Spirit. Upon him rests all your grace, and through him has come all of your mercy and love. Let his light shine within our hearts tonight, even more brightly than it shines from the, the candles in this place. Help us to worship you and celebrate your everlasting love and life through him. We pray. Amen. Let's continue seeing the first Noel.
At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, in the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them.
this will surely be a Christmas to remember. Not because it will be our favorite Christmas or because we want to repeat it, but because it is so unusual. We can't be with all the ones that we love this year. We can't even be in the sanctuary on Christmas Eve. In a sense, this Christmas allows us to feel some of what Mary and Joseph must have felt that first Christmas. Caesar declaring the census to be taken in the Roman Empire meant they had to leave their home to travel to Bethlehem. So they too were separated from loved ones. Once they arrived in Bethlehem, they were isolated more, being sent out to the stable because there was no room for them in the inn. I think sometimes we forget how lonely they must have felt, at least until the shepherd, the shepherd showed up. We will all miss being with some special people this Christmas, perhaps due to COVID, perhaps you had a loved one that passed away this year. And unless your family is wildly creative and technologically savvy, it is likely you will miss some special family traditions that you and your crew might practice each year. Maybe there's a special food that you make and eat together. Maybe you roll tamales. Maybe you make Christmas cookies or other treats. We started a Christmas Eve tradition a few years back of sausage balls and chips and queso. It was a great tradition to start, and I'm looking forward to having that in just a few minutes. Maybe your family plays a certain game each year. Maybe your family works a big jigsaw puzzle together each year. Maybe there's one person who always says the blessing or reads the Christmas story from Luke 2. In my family growing up, the tradition was that the children would pass out the Christmas presents, which meant that my brother and I passed out all the presents. I have been passing out Christmas presents since the day I could walk. And that's because my brother and I are the only children in our family. I mean, we are it. Both my parents are only children. So our, our Christmas gatherings were small and there were only two kids. Even into adulthood, we still were the only ones passing out Christmas presents. One reason I asked Trisha to marry me as quickly as possible was because I wanted help passing out presents at Christmas. At its core, the story and message of Jesus' birth is not particularly complex. It really is as simple as gift giving at Christmas. Now, because of my vast experience as one of the world's foremost gift passers, I know a thing or two about gift giving. The secret to a great gift exchange is simplicity. You must focus on three basic elements. To whom? There's a tag on the present that tells me who to give the present to. From who? The recipient of the present can look at that tag to see who the present's from. And finally, what is it? You open up the present and see what you got. The gift passer needs to know who the gift goes to. The gift receiver needs to know who the gift came from. And we all want to see what's inside the present. God followed that same simple formula that night in Bethlehem when he gave the greatest gift the world has ever received. 1 John 4:14 4, says in describing the coming of Jesus into the world, the Father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. To whom? The world. All of us. Each of us. You and me. From who? God. What is it? A savior. Like it or not, God is the one in the family who gives the practical gifts. Not the Xbox you want, but the coat that you need. On that first Christmas, he gave each of us what we so desperately needed. The only one who could forgive us and save us. To you, from God, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That wonderful holy night, God showed up so we might know God and love God and receive God's Spirit and make God known. We want to celebrate that night as we close our service singing Silent Night 
as we light our candles. If you have some candles ready at home, please get them now and join us as we light our candles. We will sing Silent Night, then blow out our candles and close our service singing Joy to the World. And we hope that you will join us as we sing. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all the world. We celebrate that light tonight.
Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.